ladies and gentlemen, welcome to an Overwatch <laughs> advanced guide. <laughs> All right, what I want to talk to you guys about in this video is the notion of swapping your character to win the game. I want to make a statement here, and this is a completely true statement. Overwatch, while it does depend on mechanical skill, that's not what's going to get you through the ranks. What's going to increase your rank is understanding what the enemy team are doing, understanding what your team comp is, and playing around that, and just literally outplaying the enemy. Because if you've got the best aim in the world, it doesn't matter if you've got a Reinhardt with a barrier in your face, you're not going to be able to shoot people behind him. So, why am I showing you this gameplay clip? Well, this isn't exactly an amazing gameplay clip off me, but it will show you guys one thing my thought process behind swapping my hero to actually bring home the win. Because if I hadn't swapped, we're going to lose. Now, I started off this game wanting to play Soldier 76. You guys know I like Soldier 76. However, the enemy team is quite mm, difficult for me to get work done. We've got a Tracer that is all over me. And by the way, this Tracer player was playing fantastically well. Absolutely annihilates me here. I mean, I just, I'm just destroyed. Whatever. I'm annihilated by the Tracer. But they've also got a Wrecking Ball. Now, Soldier against a Tracer and a Wrecking Ball, and they've got a Ryan as well, and their team's kind of playing together. It's going to be hard for me to find opportunities. So I am being, a little, in fact, let's just let's just go back a bit here. So when I bring up the, uh, the the team, and I'll show you the team comps, because I'm being a little bit naive here. I'm sort of like, I want to play Soldier, and I'm like totally, come on, style, there you go. Totally hand over heart. I want to play Soldier. So I'm like, I'm going to play Soldier. It's, this is like the mentality that loses you games. Now, Let's take a look at the team comps here. So there's me on Soldier, obviously. We've got an Orissa, which is like, it's it's okay. I, I don't mind the Orissa. You know, we've got a Zarya, okay. We've got a Hanzo, we've got a Brig, and we've got a Anna. So the problem here is we don't really have enough healing. Um, a Brig and an Anna isn't really enough healing. It can work. Um, I'm playing Soldier, I can heal myself. So it's like, eh, it's not too bad. But then look at the enemy team. So this is our team comp as we rolled out of the gates, which is fine. You know, we don't know what the enemy's got. However, as you can see, this game is actually quite uh, far in. I mean, look at the percentages at the top. You know, we, we've been playing for a while and yet I haven't swapped my hero. Look at my stats. They're not great. You know, I'm not really doing that well, right? Yeah, I've got silver damage. I've got crap accuracy because there's barriers in my face or I'm trying to kill a, a tracer that's jumping all over me. So look at the enemy team. Zarya, Tracer, Anna, Hammond, uh, sorry, Wrecking Ball, Lucio and uh, Reinhardt. My problem here is I'm not too effective against this. I'm not too effective against this because this is stopping me do damage to all of this. This is not a good time. Like for Soldier, you can deal with a Hammond. If a Hammond comes in and he's got no cooldowns, you can just poke him away. You can poke the Hammond away anyway. But with Hammond just diving into your team, you don't really have any response. You don't have any answer. What could this be to help deal with this and deal with this? Well, there's a cowboy, isn't there, ladies and gentlemen? There's also another character um, from uh, uh, Spain. Well, not really from... Is she... Hang on. Is she Brazilian? Oh, no. oh, my God. No, she's Spanish, surely. Oh, my God, ladies. Where is Sombra from? Mexico. There you go. Mexico. What the hell? Or Sombra, right? Anyway, let's get, let's get stuck back into playing this. So... Let's watch what I'm doing. Let's go through my thought process. So I've already explained I'm being a bit boneheaded. I'm just bashing my head against the wall. It's 67 to 99. I've got attack visor. I get nice positioning here. Kill the tracer. I don't mind that. That's cool. That's fine. Uh, you know, just trying to poke away the hamster. It's all good. We've won this fight. Now, the next fight is going to be the last fight. So this is where we're going to use all of our ultimates. I'm trying to be cheeky here. I'm pushing forward and trying to look for the tracer because I know she's probably going to try and flank. I want to try and poke her away. Their soldiers sort of not AFK there, but he's, he's probably talking to his team or waiting for them to group. We can see where they're coming from. Okay, so I'm anticipating the Tracer. So what I've done is changed my playstyle to anticipate the Tracer because I don't want this Tracer near me because it's a good Tracer. So you can see I'm poking it away. It's heavily pressuring me. It's used its recall. I'm just going to attack Visor here because I know the Tracer's gone. She's not going to pressure me. It's a fairly okay to attack position to attack fires from not the best i put out a lot of damage but i didn't really secure any kills but as we're about to see here my team is going to follow through and actually we're going to pick up this round which is cool and which is fine now this was close this was really really close our team beat their team i can only imagine through outplaying their individual heroes right but it was an uphill battle it was a struggle so let's just go forward here and let's go to the start of the next round so you can see for some reason now we've got a junkrat not entirely sure why we've got a Junkrat, but again, this is Overwatch competitive. This is just what it's like. And I've got to say something about this rank as well. Um, you guys probably noticed this at other ranks as well. Um, but this sort of like, this is kind of like, it's a weird rank this is. I think this is like about, 
I think the game is about 3,400-ish rated. Um, Spitfire is an account I've not really played on for a while, but I think this account was around 3.9k when I was playing it. Um, but, I mean, none of that matters. Like, this game here, you generally do get a lot of smurfs from sort of higher masters and low GM that will just come to into these kind of games just to play whatever they want, right? Because they want to be like, hey, I want to try Junkrat. Hey, I mean, like me, like, hey, I want to play Soldier. So I'm doing the same thing, right? So you get that kind of weird setup. But though Junkrat is a bit of a weird pick here. It can still work. I mean, everything can work, but it relies on the enemy team just walking into it like a bunch of idiots. So let's, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll look at the first engagement here, then we'll jump forward. So I'll move around the right-hand side to try and take a bit of uh, decent ground. I think I hear, um, I don't think we've got the sound turned on for you guys. Probably got music playing in the background. But I'm sure I heard the wrecking ball or something move around the side here. That's why I backed off. Or oh, it was fairly close, probably deploying this grapple. But we've unfortunately lost Zarya because Zarya decided to just walk to the point on her own without the team, which is a criminal mistake, and there's not really much you can do about that. Hammond again is pushing him, but as you can see, Hammond is quite good at getting away. It's very difficult for soldiers to secure kills on him because we can't stop his movement. We can't shut him down. And there are two heroes which we should be playing which can achieve that. One hero being Sombra being the best pick, the other one being McCree. And, and spoiler alert, I will swap to Sombra, uh, Sombra eventually when I'm sick of getting, you know, not really doing anything. Because even though it feels like I'm doing a lot, this is the message I want to get across to you guys. Actually, if I was playing a different hero, I'd be doing so much more. In this game, you see, I'm playing Soldier into a, a team which is just, it's not effective. So, let's jump forward here. So, it looks like I swapped to Farah there briefly. Most likely, this is because I, I, I actually, this I'd say this is a really bad swap. So, well, totally bad, ridiculous. Then I swapped to Doomfist, not really sure what I'm doing there. And now I'm on Sombra. So, this is the swap that I should have made. This is what we're looking at. So, with Sombra, there's a lot of things you can do. Now, you have to be aware of the level you're playing the game at. And... While you are getting a lot of intel, it doesn't really matter like relaying that intel back to your team if you don't really have a plan to deal with it. Like you'll notice me, I'm not actually talking about the team in this game. All I'm trying to do is prioritize getting hacks and getting kills. You can see I had a little bit of a problem there. I was trying to hack Hammond and then it kind of went all over the place. Now, primary hack targets for me is obviously going to be Hammond. I've just killed Hammond. I'm killing Anna, so I'm being super effective now. So let me just go back a second here and show you guys this. So I'm trying to get the hack on Hammond, but I've got my sensitivity screwed up, so whatever. A hack, I don't think I even hacked the Anna, but I've killed the Hammond, right? So we're two up here, so really we should be winning this fight. Then I get a cheeky hack on the Anna. This is great. So already my effectiveness, my value is skyrocketed just because I'm playing a, a, a different hero, which is more applicable in this situation. Then I'm smashing the Zen. So I'm actually doing loads of work here, right? The enemy team fighting back we're fighting back the Hammond comes in he's hacked he's dead like how can that Hammond escape now he literally can't they're popping ultimates and it's getting a bit messy now but this was earlier on in the round that Hammond screwed right if this was a previous round that Hammond screwed it's like Sombra is very effective against Doomfist and Hammond the enemy team have got a Hammond I should have been this is what I should have swapped to straight away as soon as I died I should have been like okay uh, on the mecha base where I'm just going to play Sombra or maybe a McCree because I was getting pressured by the Tracer and I think McCree is maybe a bit better than Sombra at dealing with the Tracer. So, look, I mean, just look look at the way the fight's breaking out now. They have now got an additional problem. They've got Sombra to worry about. They don't know where she is. I'm sort of running around trying to look for a hack like an idiot having to get out of there because I'm getting poked. I've almost got AMP, so this means we can engage with the AMP. Uh, problem is we're losing this team fight, which is unfortunate, but I still go in with a bit of a YOLO AMP take out the Zen. I don't think the Zen got hit by the MP there, but hey, it kind of doesn't matter because we are losing the rest of the fight. Um, but it was the last fight, so always use your ultimate in the last fight, even if it looks hopeless, because you never know. So let's just go forward here. So objective failed. This is unlucky. Right then, let's take a look at this entire round, because we know they've got a Hammond, right? In fact, let's just go forward to the start of the game. We've got some swaps here. So we've got a, um, a pharmacy combo here, which, you know, is, is it, it, you know, this is effective. I don't mind that. That's cool. Uh, we've got Moira for heal. Well, we've actually got two primary healers here, so we've got a lot of healing. The issue with this is we have no defensive ultimate. This, again, is a thing you need to look at if you are a support player. So if I was this Moira player, and again, this just goes back to using your brain to win games. Because like I said at the top of this video, Overwatch is a game about mechanical skill, but that's not what's going to get you through the ranks. What gets you through the ranks is playing every game at face value, is looking at your team, thinking what you can play to fill the gaps, and also looking at the enemy team, thinking what you can play to screw up the enemy team. There, there is a very clear gap here. The gap is we have no defensive ultimate, so what do we do? Well, if I'm the Moira player, 
Obviously, we want the Mercy because the Mercy is going to play with the Farah, right? So this Moira player needs to either play Lucio or needs to play Zen. The reason for that is we want the defensive ultimate. We want Transcendence or we want Sound Barrier because that, that's going to keep us alive when the enemy start using their ultimates. Okay, so let's play this bad boy. Now, you can see my stats have, have started to recover quite a bit now. They're not as bad as they were when I was playing Soldier because I'm being more effective. So I'm going to skirt around the outside. I'm going to look for a hack. I'm going to try and, you know, take out there. Like, we, we know their Tracer player is really good. So we need to be aware of the Tracer player. But look at this now. Like, I can wait. I can take my, my, my time. I can take my pick. I can hack the Ana, then just start working on the Ana. You know, I've got to be careful. I don't want to die. But it's enough to keep that Ana away from the front of the fight, which has given our team a massive bonus. This means that our Reinhardt's push forward. The rest of our team's push forward. It allows me to control the Mega there. And it's all good. And it's all dandy. Now... One of the things I'm doing here, which I should really be uh, working into my rotation with Sombra a little bit better, is putting my Translocator down, which I'm not really doing as often as I should. Um, like, I don't actually have a Translocator down now. To be fair, I am just trying to get kills and get cleanup. Um, you will notice that the Hammond is screwed. Like, so this Hammond player now, through being hacked, he is literally, like, his effectiveness has dropped by more than 20 or 30% just because of the hero selection I've made. There's no skill involved in that. It's just IQ. It's using your head. But even it took me a while to get to the point of like, oh, I should do this. Now, I'm fairly sure to give myself the benefit of the doubt. I knew that I needed to swap the soldier, but I just wanted to play the soldier. And again, this goes back to the whole idea of competitive being people just going in there, you know, to just do whatever they like, which is not great on my part. You know, you shouldn't really be doing that. You should be trying to play against what the enemy have got. Now, of course, obviously, if you're playing a tank character, you're not going to swap to a DPS character and leave your team without a primary tank. That would be ridiculous. I see players do that a lot. Don't do that. So here, like, I know that I can't really do too much there, but what I'm trying to do is get my EMP online. You can see it's almost ready. Drop my translocator down. I should have healed up before I moved out, but I just want to get in there, get a big fat EMP. Primary target's always the Zen after the EMP, and then I die because I kind of outstay my welcome, which wasn't great. That was bad Sombra play, but... Have I done enough to like crush the enemy's defensive position? Probably. And our team are starting to cap the point. Um, it's a bit of a mess, but our team are starting to cap the point. So you can see that this is just so much more effective. Now, this is like when we talk about advanced guides in Overwatch, when we talk about, you know, you can watch various channels might just rip VODs from pros playing the game. And they're like, oh, yeah, you know, just copy what this pro does. Or even some of them say, don't copy what the pros do, which, by the way, is horrifically bad advice. Copying what the pros do is invaluable, especially in solo queue, especially on ladder. Not from their competitive game, uh, their, their Overwatch League game, sure. But from ladder, they'll show you tricks. This is how you get better at the game, watching plays that are better than you and learning off them. So if anyone says to you guys, oh, no, you can't learn off the pros, they're, they're crazy. On the other hand as well, just showing stream VODs of um, pro pros playing and going, oh, yeah, you should do this, you should do that. It doesn't really apply to most of the player base. The reality is most of the player base when it comes to Overwatch are gold, platinum, silver, really. They're not they're not GM players, they're not master players, they're not even diamond players. So by me showing you my own footage and explaining to you the reasons why I'm going through this, it's a much more realistic, much more applicable guide. So this team are getting absolutely battered now. They're taking loads of frontline damage from our Farah, but this is letting me just do what I like. Now this DAE player, a very good player as we've seen in the first round, extremely good tracer player. But now his team are getting absolutely dominated. Is that player better than me? Well, I'll tell you what, his accuracy was looking a hell of a lot better than mine. In fact, let's just go back. Let's just go right back. I'll show you when he, this guy was just absolutely dominating me. <laughs> Why was I on Doomfist there? That's just ridiculous. Looking at, looking at my stats, good good stuff. Uh, we'll find it, because he, he, he this player was annihilating me. Like, he was taking me in 1v1s and just absolutely killing me. Uh, looks like Lucio got a mega boot there. <laughs> Here you go. Watch this. W watch this fight break out now. And you tell me that this player isn't better than me with hit scan accuracy, right? He's jumping all over the place. I'm trying to get him. He's duking me. Oh, he's got a sound barrier, but whatever. He's duking me. I still can't hit him. He's duking me. He kills me. That player is really, really good, at least in my opinion, right? But now I'm dominating this player. He, he is failing to adapt, showing... Well... It, He's throwing the game. Like, now he's back on Tracer. So you can see that this guy was on the Soldier. Now he's gone to the Tracer. It's probably the comfort pick. It's the pick of, like, oh, you know, somebody else is now playing Soldier. So you can tell the enemy team are falling apart. But that player should have changed to deal with the Sombra. 
right, should have changed to deal with the Farah because Farah and Sombra, well, they're going to be difficult for Trace to deal with, right? And this has resulted in their team getting absolutely bad. So what I want you guys to take away from this video is sometimes when you play Overwatch, or not sometimes, all the time. I mean, look at that. Look, I just hack you and kill you, right? Think about what is the best move to win the game in front of you. Do not, and I mean, I repeat this, do not just play a hero because you are the, the that's your better hero. In a lot of cases with Overwatch, it doesn't really matter what hero you're playing. Even if you're better, like, even if I'm better with Soldier than I am with Sombra, Sombra was much more effective in that scenario, and I hope I've explained why. And I hope why this is actually something you could consider to be an advanced guy, because this will take your understanding forward. This is not stagnation. This is using critical and key ideas to apply to your gameplay to simply get better at the game. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been Silo and this is Unit Lost. If you enjoyed the video, then like the video. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter, which is at Unit Lost Gaming, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Toodaloo.